This episode of Idle Thumbs is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the fastest, easiest, most user-friendly way to make your very own website, portfolio, blog, or online store. You don't need any coding skills. You don't need any design skills. It's you don't need drop. no credit card. That's true. You don't. You can just <laughs> ride this Squarespace train uh, at squarespace.com. With the offer code THUMBS at checkout for 10% off. And if you sign up for a year, you get a free domain name. Thanks, Squarespace. <laughs> I caught that right in time. It's May 26th, 2016. This is Idle Thumbs 264. I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. I'm Jake Rodkin. It's the May 25. 16, 4, 2, whatever. What are you doing? I, all the numbers are have sixes, and it was bad sounding. Okay. It's good, though. Um, mm-hmm. The reason that all the numbers have sixes in them is because we now put the episode out on Thursday. We're now a Thursday podcast. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. we're going to commit to... we. Let's be honest. Well, yeah. That's basically <laughs> what's been happening. And so this way, um, we've heard from people that they often plan their podcast listening around their commute schedule. And so if you... Uh, want our podcast regularly out on a morning, like a- around more by morning time. Um, this way, our goal is to have the podcast always out by Thursday morning. So if that is part of your overall work and commute schedule, it'll be a little more predictable. And, and also it means we have time to at least check out stuff that comes out on Tuesdays, which is when all the games come out. Yep. So there you go. Nice. Welcome. Idle Thumbs on Thursday. Speaking of all the games coming out. Oh, yeah, but like 8 million games just came out. I'm, of course, referring to Wizard Jam, yeah. the Idle Thumbs Community Game Jam. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was We talked about this the last couple episodes, but there's a big old game jam that apparently happens, uh, or has happened a couple times a year for the last two years where people... Well, this is the third one. This is so the third ha- one. There was twice last year. Yeah, there was a regular, winter j- or a w- regular Wizard Jam, then a holiday-themed Wizard Jam, and now we're on the second annual, apparently, Wizard Jam. It's uh, a two-week-long game jam where people made... Uh, dozens of games where uh, based on the names of Idle Thumbs episodes. So uh, there's no rules or competition other than just the name of your game and presumably its theme has to come from an Idle Thumbs episode. So like, there's a couple shoot that pizzas. There's a uh, there was a cruising for a word that rhymes with cruising. Any old Idle Thumbs episode name. Anyway, uh, they're all out now, uh, and you can check them out at itch.io. Slash wizard dash jam dash 2016. Uh, that's the wrong URL. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> it's itch.io slash jam slash wizard dash jam dash 2016. I should remember that because uh, it was made into a song last year. Without the 2016. Without the 2016. Um there's some really great stuff. We're going to do a stream of all of this year's Wizard Jam games on Saturday, June 11th uh, on our Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash idle thumbs. But in the meantime, go to that URL and just download a bunch of them. Um, I, me and Nick and our friend Ollie Moss started on a Wizard Jam game that we didn't finish in time, but I decided to just throw all of my free time for the last week into finishing it anyway. So we made... Um, we made an, uh, a jam game based on the Idle Thumbs episode, Build the Nublar. So we decided to make this game uh, where you play as Dodgson, the sort of shitty scientist slash business man. Like mercenary business <laughs> Mercenary yeah. business guy <laughs> yeah. who tries to buy the embryos off of Nedry in, Jura- in the beginning of Jurassic Park. Uh, he's the guy nobody cares about. He's the guy nobody yeah. cares. We got Dodgson here, nobody cares. In our stupid... There's a lot of Dodgson lore that I'm going to skip, but needless to say, our version <laughs> takes place in an alternate universe... Uh, not too different from Jurassic Park, except that uh, maybe Dodgson did get the get the embryos. Then he has to deal with his shitty boss, uh, who makes him play a pipe dream version of Jurassic Park forever to try and build a Nublars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually made a game from scratch in an engine like Unity like this before. I've always worked on a team with programmers and uh, artists and. I've only done like tech art and UI support and some like level construction. So making a thing entirely from scratch like this, even though I'm using visual scripting and I'm using a bunch of off the shelf shelf unity stuff has been a totally amazing experience for me, actually. Like, um, I feel so much more competent as a like game content and systems prototyper than I did before. Um, 
And I think the same goes for Ollie, who has never made a, like a full game set from scratch, and he totally he used the Wizard Jam to do that. Um, but that's what's going on across the entire Wizard Jam. Man, um, I'm super excited for the stream. Chris, I am excited for you to not look at anything that has been uh, made in Wizard Jam so far, and then to play it, because I think... Um, oh, man, there's just some stuff that is really good that you'll I like. Know. I started looking at... I started sort of browsing through some of the wizard jam threads and i was like i have to stop i have to stop this because this stuff is already amazing yeah you I, just going through the threads and <laughs> you read all of rigid body rat king and then went why have i not I, why yeah, did i not like, just play this on the stream <laughs> yeah I mean, this is amazing this is totally amazing um and so yeah i have to just i have to somehow like heroically stop myself from playing or reading anything about these games so that on the stream i can have a naive reaction man it, um I'll put this a link to this one in the forums, but for folks who just want a taste of the sort of crazy caliber of stuff that Wizard Jam has to offer, just the trailer for the game In Search of Paradise, which is an Idle Weekend episode title, is super strong. It's a, it seems to be a game about a burnout paradise car that's just out in the middle of nowhere uh, on a, on just an infinite drive, but like nice. the mood is out of control. Oh, it's really good. Anyway. Um, and it ranges from crazy fully produced 3D stuff like that all the way to uh, Twine games that all seem really good. There's some really funny stuff. The Eyes of Luigi also seems really oh, yeah. good. So so we're going to stream all that stuff on June Saturday, June 11th. Um, we will put the more specific time information in the Idle Thumbs streams thread that Nick made in the Idle Thumbs episodes sub forum um, on the Idle Forums. And I'm sure we'll also, as we approach it, we'll, we'll give you more information on the podcast itself. Uh, and I'm really excited about it. I just that'll, that'll be at twitch.tv slash Idle Thumbs. If we ever did an all Wizard Jam episode of Idle Thumbs, it would be the vo- most confusing episode description of all time. Because the, <laughs> the list of games discussed would, would just, just be the, the names of other titles. episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, I hope that some. I, I hope that at some point... Uh, a wizard are there any wizard jam games that are just episode titles from three moves ahead which are just the names of other strategy games no god people <laughs> oh, talk god. about that i was oh, uh god. people talked about <clears throat> like i was talking with steve gainer about yeah about how it would be amazing to just do uh, a like tone control episode titles where you just make a game called sid meyer <laughs> 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 just, whatever ken levine uh yeah, I know. I don't think anyone did it, but people talked about it. It was it was really tempting to yeah, just maybe that should be the next uh, Wizard Jam theme. Well, the the theme right now was just oh, you mean to just make a uh, just specifically yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, tone control, control mini jam, tone control mini tone jam, control yeah. Mini jam. Yeah. weird. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> that'd be really uh, good. But yeah, just Crusader Kings too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man, with strategy games, you could definitely make some weird. Oh yeah, because those games are such about such esoteric topics, and also. Um, their so, their gameplay is so unusual and ill suited to making in a game jam usually, and so obviously the game jam version of any of those titles is going to be something way simpler and wackier than whatever the real game is. Someone oh, yeah. made a build the Nublar that is an actual Jurassic Park sim where you can build visitor centers and tourists come in off the dock and go to the nearest visitor center and then go and look at dinosaurs. But if dinosaurs escape, like they stop spending Jeez. money and they run around it's and stuff. It looks like um it looks like Darwinia or something where yeah, it's a terrain yeah, yeah. that then has little sprites right. wandering around on it like uh, in 3D space. But yeah. Um, meanwhile I made a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It's a very pretty pipe dream. It's a very pretty yeah. <laughs> well new, that. uh, that's, the yeah, yeah, that's the episode title yeah yeah that's the episode title of this episode and then yeah <laughs> oh god yeah actually speaking of that um during wizard jam we released an episode called dead letters and we released another episode called disable enemies to reveal enemies over the two weeks of wizard jam there are games of those episodes <laughs> that's so, so good that's yeah. amazing yeah 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 our community is incredible uh it's it's really astonishing um, the fact that they've just totally self-organized and done all this stuff and that it's so welcoming and useful. Like there's people are super helpful um, in, yeah. in terms of learning about game development. It's amazing. Yeah. I hope you guys all check these games out, but um, if you don't have time, that's why we're doing a stream. So you can get a look at all of them. Yep. All right. So that's that. Um, I've been playing more overwatch. That was what I oh. was. That was what I, when you, when we first talked about Tuesday, new games, I meant to overwatch. Just, oh yeah, yes. hi, I'm a mess. Chris. That game, I know. <laughs> uh, Overwatch officially came out, even though people, I guess, have kind of been playing it 
through betas and stuff for a little while, but uh, I've been playing it You more. played it in the beta, right? I did, yeah. Um, I played it in both, I guess, the closed beta and then the open beta. Okay. Um, Overwatch is so good. It is so good. I could tell that it was that it was good and fun before, but but I was playing it. I think when I was in the uh, when I was in the betas, I you know I didn't really have a lot of investment because it was free, and I you know I'm like oh this seems fun. It's like a fun TF2 ish thing, you know. But I didn't. But that was like a very sort of um, uninteresting opi- or like unconsidered opinion. Um, not that it's incorrect they're definitely strong tf2 stuff including the like payload move the cart thing oh man it's got it's got payload style yeah it's got that i think they even call it payload um that's honest and good yeah yeah i agree (laughs) i think stuff like that becomes genericized and that's yeah it's like ctf exactly yeah um but uh but i am blown away by how smart and well considered this game is it's really really impressive like here here's an example of of something i mean by that this is a very small thing but i think it really reflects the kind of uh just very careful design attitude that blizzard has that really is one of the reasons they're a successful company or as successful as they are which is very um you know, in, in online shooters or many multiplayer games, but mainly shooters, you know, when you hit tab, you it'll bring up like the sort of scoreboard, mm-hmm. right? And it'll show everyone's kills. And if it's an objective type game, it'll show, you know, people's captures or whatever. In this game, when you bring that up, it just shows your performance and some other information about like the server and, and your performance on it and stuff there at no point in the entire game flow. Do you ever see a ranked list of who was the best and more importantly, who was the worst and who was dragging the team down and who died a lot. You never see that. It's, oh man, it's really, really hmm. brilliant. Instead at the end of the game, first you see what's called a play of the game which is an what what which is a sort of programmatically generated replay of the cool of like <laughs> the co- the coolest like thing that anyone did which usually is like a crazy quadruple kill um and it's really easy to select for this right because if you kill like four people in 3 seconds probably that means you yeah. did something notable or wacky or interesting sometimes it's just oh someone like did their ultimate move and just killed four people at once and that's that's fine but very frequently like a high percentage of the time it's someone just being a total lord you know and like spinning around and jumping off an edge and headshotting someone and I'm going to ask the stupidest question in the world because oh, yeah. it makes me a bad person do they include the ability to encode that as a gif and put it in a tweet I don't think so. Fucking owned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh. Yeah, no. I I mean the nice thing is this is a Blizzard game which means it will live for basically forever. Right? So there's Just like tweets. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh so and then after that you get um like a a sort of match scoreboard thing that it doesn't rank players but what it does is it it will show four individual like impressive things that four players did across both teams so it's like this player got the most kills this player like had the best healing uptime like this player gave sort of this sort of um wall uh x-ray vision thing thing to all the players the uh, a huge percentage of the time and like this player you know, had the best like objective um, completion time or whatever. It is, they're they're all they're different every game, just based on impressive statistics players have racked up, and then everyone votes again across both teams for which of these is the most impressive thing. And so it's a really amazing way of like that's potentially up to five players who just got recognized by the game for being cool, but not on a strict like you just have the best kill to death ratio right Mm -hmm. it's across these like incredibly broad and diverse metrics that the game is constantly tracking man that is rad that is amazing it is brilliant it's It's absolutely brilliant and so (laughs) even if even if you're not amazing sometimes you're just like oh i was just a great healer and i just like the first time i used um this this healing character whose name i can't recall um you know, I got one of those little commendations one time for just being really like conscientious about keeping everyone healed. And I'm like, Oh man, I was totally not like the most important player of this game at all. But like, there was just that little bit of recognition and it's, 
it's, Man, it's way better. It's the really thing you're good. describing is the feature that I've wanted like almost exactly in Team Fortress 2 ever since I think um, when Source Filmmaker came out. This I'm really happy that this is in a game because this was always uh, this was always my like back pocket. If I for some reason ever get a job interview at Valve, what I wanted to pitch them <laughs> was run a demo recorder all the time, show a programmatically generated match of the game, and then show like a montage of like five randomly selected best other notable things. And then, so this isn't quite that. No, this yeah, shows yeah, a scoreboard yeah, yeah. at the end yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of the best play. But my yeah. stupid pitch was then you could also let people pay ninety nine cents to batch render it off uh, using Source Filmmaker on a Valve cloud server and upload it to YouTube. That was that, <laughs> oh, uh, so you could get like the good lighting <laughs> version of your sick plays. But whatever, this functionally is the same basic idea. Um, it's like Valve also did when Valve did Alien Swarm. They had that post match screen that had all mm-hmm. like that showed the graphs of performance and a bunch of kills mm, and deaths. Right. This seems like the the. Uh, post like button universe of that See, where you just yeah, show the good stuff you just is, like this this just like the, boost your team this right? is cool but yeah this is not like the sort of like uh data nerd obsessive version of that the, no that it uses it uses this all of the, the data that they have right but it to show you it. how everyone is great exactly yeah that's really and, cool and in, and it across again like importantly across a lot of different kinds of metrics not just kill death so yeah no it, it you urges know, you to to do things that are that benefit your team to try and get yourself up onto the end of right. game screen by, but they, they use that yeah. to incentivize good play. That's really yeah. cool. It's so good. It's such a good game. I cannot believe how good it is. I, I'm really honestly, like, I, I don't want to say surprised because that's, I, I don't think I would have expected this game to be bad. I just didn't really think that it would be so clever in so many mm. different ways. Um, it's a real reminder of what an incredibly accomplished studio blizzard is i mean it's really crazy to think that blizzard has been around for what 25 years now i mean since the early 90s um and there was a period i remember sort of post initial wow release where it felt like that studio was kind of over for they were just gonna be the wow studio forever right because i I played wow for like six months and i liked it but i was like okay I, i got it i'm done with this and i just felt and then they went years and years and years and i'm like i guess Blizzard is just not really a studio for me anymore. Like they're just, they got this one thing and, and then that's fine, you know, like more power to them. But, but it was, it was kind of a bummer to me because I grew up playing Warcraft one, Warcraft two, Diablo, uh, Diablo two, Starcraft one, uh, like just Warcraft three kind of, I mean, by then I was already kind of starting to check out. But then since then, um, Hearthstone is not like my thing necessarily but it's a totally different direction for them which is awesome um starcraft 2 is like nick you and i got a lot of play out of yeah, that we were consumed by that for a while and then uh here's the storm again not quite like super mu- uh, my thing but i really appreciate that they've reinvigorated yeah. themselves as studio that but this is like the biggest make... step outside of it right because yeah, hearthstone was kind of the warcraft card game Here's the storm was kind of yeah the mega blizzard was Dota yeah it seems um, like yeah I mean the, the even the mechanics of those and <clears throat> the lore of them sort of spun off of existing stuff and this is just like fuck it we're making a like twitchy arena first person yeah. shooter using completely new visual aesthetic well and this even ca- was like reborn out of the ashes of their failed yeah it's out of the, like, the WoW no. sequel new MMO yeah. project yeah man thank God they didn't make a new MMO I know. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I say that as someone, like, that's a shitty thing for me to say, I guess, because if you're a person who still really loves MMO, you, MMOs, you're probably bummed that Blizzard dropped doing a new full-scale MMO. But just from a business standpoint, that doesn't seem like that was going to work at this point. Yeah. yeah. It's really crazy that what they decided was maybe it's going to be, uh, like, an arena-based, class-based first-person shooter with, like, push-the-cart payload uh, gameplay and, like... I don't know. It's got uh, rocket launchers and stuff. Just the bones of some component of that game. At some I, point. Yeah, but yeah. it's 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 just the th- like this part's working. There are people yeah. who there are. I mean, there are people who are just like Blizzard people, and it's interesting to me that they are potentially going to be introduced to this genre of game through Blizzard making it. Yeah, like yeah. if you're like a person who played a ton of WoW. Mm-hmm. Um, and goes to BlizzCon and, you know, yeah. got into their other game. <clears throat> you know, maybe maybe you play Heroes of the Storm or you, or probably more likely a lot of Hearthstone. This game is probably actually more approachable for the, that audience than Dota likes would be. You mm-hmm. know, like, I don't yeah. know. It's just, 
I see a few people on Twitter who I've only ever mostly seen talk about WoW or who talk about Blizzard stuff a lot, or yeah. like even people I follow on Facebook from high school who are talking about Overwatch. And I'm like, what? Where were you when I like we were playing <laughs> TF2 uh, a decade yeah. ago? Yep. Interesting. They were playing World of Warcraft. They were playing yeah. WoW. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. Yeah. And I, I was totally one of those Blizzard people growing up in the sense that you know when Diablo came out, that game had nothing to do with Warcraft, but I played it because it was Blizzard and it right. was amazing. You know, it's you so... watch that teaser trailer on the CD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that like 320 by 200 quick yeah. time file. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, Overwatch is amazing. I know that the only thing I really talked about was like the weird post match thing, but it's just a, it's a really great overall team based first person shooter. Um, oh, also man, the first the day it came out i had a really like bummer experience that is so specific to my stupid like multiplayer leanings where i i'd played like three games and i'm like oh this is so fun this is so great and then in like the fourth game i played um you know halfway through the game i heard the little like hey guys help me out over here and i was like oh no that's voice chat and i ba- i almost just like alt f forward right there cuz this <laughs> shitty nerd's just like i mean i'm sure he's a perfectly nice person but like this this, this <laughs> everyone who you gets know what processed I want through video game uh, voice yeah, chat is all sound terrible hey guys yeah, yeah just, you just can't do anything about it it sounds awful always i want to i want the the overwatch like those perfect cg like uh, trailers that they made for to promote this game i want somebody to just take those and then halfway <laughs> through just be like them. Get to the flag! What are you doing? Like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> so I immediately turned off voice yeah, chat just... and have not gone back. Demo man, where are you? I <laughs> see you over there. Yeah. I'm here at the cart. Yeah. yeah. I'm at the cart. Well, so first, the first the first thing I did was I turned it. I I thought I was using I thought I was using the right option and I turned it off, but what I had actually only turned off was was it in matches, mm. but technically not globally in the oh, game. No. And so the very so I I'm like, ah, oh, great, peaceful game. And the very next thing that happened was I was like the finish the match was on the character select screen and I wasn't sure who I wanted to play because I didn't know all the characters yet. And some guy started going, Remo, hey, Remo, make a builder. We need a builder on the team, Remo. Come on, get on. Hey, hey, get to it. Come on, let's get a builder going. And I'm like, I don't know what a builder is because it's it's one of those things where there's like four classes that are like offense, defense, support, you know, right. whatever. But then like Dota, there's sort of meta ones that are other like sub roles that don't map cleanly to right. those. So I was like frantically mousing around as this guy was yelling my name in my ear, trying to get me to choose a builder. And I just had a total like borderline panic attack. Um, and I just picked some random character and I don't think it was a, bu- I'm sure it wasn't a builder. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you had it turned off in matches. You didn't hear that sigh, but it was, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. definitely <laughs> sighed. Well, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so now I've turned it off and maybe for all I know, there's still people yelling yeah. at me to do stuff and I don't know. And I'm having a great time. And then you're like, I got a healing award. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I can't believe that guy's a fucking right. medic. Those guys are running the plugin that does just have the full ranked leaderboard. And right, yeah. <laughs> just like, God, he's got nothing. He's doing nothing. What are we doing? I hope that over time, they one of the things they add in is like, per character training that seems like the kind of thing blizzard would actually do Mm. and what i ended up doing was just going into the ai bot just like the the just like normal practice arena and just i cycled through every single character in the entire game Mm. which is a lot there's like 15 characters um until i at least (laughs) knew all of their abilities and stuff and that was pretty oh you did you hear that little smug that was that that was a dota that was a dota laugh (laughs) (laughs) i know in team fortress 2 valve did um you should be you should have said that in fucking team chat right yeah yeah like this is a lot of characters noob yeah And then only start referring to Overwatch classes by how their their most close approximation in the original <laughs> defense right. of the ancients. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, just uh, Team Fortress Two has that training thing. Valve did it for at least some classes. Oh, yeah, that's true. I wonder how many people actually have ever used that as opposed to people who just jump in and I learn bet through more failing. More people would use it in a Blizzard game than a Valve game. I I, I just I I could be wrong about no, that, you're but I right. I don't know. Like they have a. What are you saying about Blizzard players, Chris? <laughs> I don't know. Blizzard they like just, tutorials. I know, Blizzard just prioritizes that stuff in a way that I think, like when you go when you first go into Overwatch, it it doesn't require you to, but it strongly encourages you to go through this just introductory flow, and it's actually really useful. And I'm glad that they do that. Cool. Yeah. So Overwatch is good. It's so good. Yeah, that's cool. One dumb note for PC players: 
Blizzard tries really hard to automatically shuttle you into a sixty dollars version of Overwatch, but there is oh, yeah. a forty dollars PC version, SKU yeah. that Wait, you can there find. Is? Oh, yes. weird. Yes, that's what I got. I, oh, you bought the sixty dollars. I didn't buy it yet, but uh, I'm, I'm apparently on console surprised. it's only sixty bucks, but on PC you can get a stripped down one that has fewer like uh, default character costumes in it and stuff. And, uh, like, there's not even that. There's basically nothing. There's like a Heroes of the Storm character that if you want that character, you can buy it for cheaper in Heroes of the Storm anyway. There's like a couple skins. There's it's really almost nothing. God, it's totally just, not worth. Did you guys see the screenshot of somebody like? Apparently, enough people are buying this game at once right now. Like, oh, it's, there's a it's queue so to get the There's store. a queue for the digital store. Yeah, oh, I, wow. Like a 200 I, person I queue. Somebody it like took it. Ten minutes before it came out. Oh, okay. So I think I, yeah. I bought yeah. Overwatch during the launch rush, and I was 300th mm. in line to check out of this <laughs> oh, ba- BattleNet store. That's amazing. God, yeah, that's crazy. That's actually probably a good idea. I mean, it's better to do that than to risk your credit card information being ending up in some limbo yeah you know mm-hmm. where yeah. you're pre-authorized but they haven't gotten the yep. thing yeah yep. overwatch yeah it's really good really That's really cool. good yep um man I, I mean i've been playing a bunch of stuff so i don't know does anyone else want to i want to hear about nick's roller coaster escapade oh, yes. oh yeah because I hear a, you've had escapades. Well, I hear you. You, I did. I did ride a roller coaster this this weekend. Yeah, your your uh, planet uh, coaster experience has extended out to just visiting Disneyland right. to collect reference. I imagine for your sick theme parks. Yeah, more or less. Um, what yeah. roller coaster did you ride? I, well, I rode the uh, California, California Screaming Screamin', yeah. uh, California that's Adventure the roller coaster, which I had never done before, and that's probably the most intense roller oh. coaster I've ever actually ridden. Really? Which is yeah, weird. Really it's cool because it I'm does... a baby and I don't ride <laughs> intense rides. California usually. Screaming is the is the roller coaster in Disney's California Adventure, which is the park next door to Disneyland. But it's notable because the ride starts using electromagnets instead of a yeah, cable. It's a powered launch. So you just yeah. go from. You have like a zero to sixty time on the ground, basically. Uh-huh. You start flat, and it just jettisons you up the hill. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's yep. impressive. Um, yeah, I was I was definitely peer pressured into that, and <laughs> it was I was with a group, a large group of people, and uh, went on that thing, and then uh, yeah, was at Disneyland all weekend, and so I'm a destroyed human. But then immediately got back and realized that the alpha, the second alpha of Planet Coaster was live, mm. and so downloaded that and played it uh, until I shouldn't have. Uh, but it's really good. Man, oh my god. So here's the thing. They added terrain deformation. Mm. Oh, One, shit. it's probably the best terrain deformation tool I've used in a game, period. Two, what it allows you to do is essentially, like, so they also added coaster creation, which, you know, it's good to have in your coaster game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so the coaster creator is actually really interesting. So I, I had played, um, I had loaded up actually, uh, roller coaster tycoon, uh, a week ago, just because I've been playing these coaster sims and just kind of want to go back to the original and see what that was like. And, you know, like it's still kind of the best released version of this game where it's grid based, uh, building a coaster is relatively easy because it's grid based. It has sort of height, uh, you know, numbers numbers for each section of track uh, denoting, like, how high the that particular track is so that you know... You have to connect a three a t- to a three or whatever? Well, that, and then also, like, you know, just in terms of coaster design, you can't, like, if you go, if you bring everybody up to a 20, you don't want to go back up to a 20 eventually because that's just, you know, in terms of inertia, they're never going right. to, you know, the car, you know, car's not going to make it. Um, so it allows you to kind of very uh, meticulously plan out a track. But what... Um, these guys did it with Planet, with what T- Frontier did with Planet Coaster. Uh, they threw out that whole um, uh, uh, type of, of creation. Like every every other uh, theme park game seems to be doing the same sort of grid based thing. They're they just threw it out and they they're doing their own thing. And um, it's crazy. Like essentially, each piece of track is additive, so you you can kind of grab the end of the track and just sort of bend it in the direction you want it to go. Um, but then once you've then laid that piece of track, uh, it sort of continues that current um, uh, movement. So it's kind so of, to, it sounds inspired by some of the road construction in the yes. new, in SimCity 2013. Yeah, exactly. The way you can sort of paint naturally mm-hmm. curving roads. Interesting. Yeah, and then um, so, but then the the real genius of that is when you uh, also. <laughs> The other thing is you can just hit an autocomplete button, which is amazing because then it just wraps around to the, the station, which is like if you've played any ah. of these games, it's infuriating to sometimes try and make your track connect. Hitting the autocomplete button is, ama- is just an incredible. Man, so you got to drag that coaster as far away as you possibly can from the station, then put a bunch of weird terrain and uh, buildings <laughs> well, there, and then press autocomplete and see what it does. That and then also... so <laughs> Similar here, face. So, so two things. One, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I was going to make a similar face uh, coaster, but... So the two things. So the autocomplete similar face coaster. I'm gonna do it. 
uh, this, the uh, the auto complete's amazing. Then once you've completed the track, you can actually just grab each section of track and just pull it in a different direction. So you can test your car; it'll be running, and you'll and see like, oh, like it's a going a little too fast here. So I can just grab a bulge and just pull mm-hmm. it up or to the side, which means that like tuning your your track so it's not like an insane coaster is like way oh, easier. Really like in the past, you'd have to just delete. All the way back up to the point at which your coaster sucks and then right. rebuild the rest of the coaster. Now you can just kind of like, yeah, that's good. you know, tweak it a little bit. And the other thing is the terrain deformation is so good that basically you can create a coaster and then just pull up the earth and it will just deform around the coaster track to the extent that you can just fully pull it up, like just raise, so you can make raise like up a, a mountain and then it will just wrap around and create tunnels. So Whoa. you can just create yeah. you can create a coaster and then just raise the earth and then make the Matterhorn essentially because it will just cover the entire coaster eventually. Right. And then the lighting system is good enough that at nighttime it's completely in the dark and you can play spotlights and like oh, other man. other like doodads inside the track so you can just make the Yeti come you popping out and like doing weird shit and like you can just basically do everything you'd want to do with this. It's a, crazy. Did you ride the Matterhorn when you were at Disneyland this week? Not this week, but recently, yeah. I You've done it since they've re- done it. They redid yeah. the stupid Yeti animatronic, yeah. and it's scary as fuck. It's really scary now. Sorry, yeah. just a little Disneyland information. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that view was like a joke when I was a kid, and it actually freaked me out as a kid to ride it at night recently. Yeah. Like, they have... You said well, it freaked me out as a kid to ride it at night Oh, it freaked, me as, an, it freaked <laughs> me out as an adult to ride it at night recently. Like, they have... On the big climb at the beginning, there's uh, ice that you can only vaguely see through on the side, and you see... The Yeti, like, sort of, you hear it hear you and then start to sort of climb and you just see, like, a weird shadowy furry shape disappear into the rocks as you're going up the hill. It's really scary. They did a good job. Anyway, put that in Planet Coaster. Yeah. (laughs) There's just, they're... Speaking of the terrain deformation, real quick. Speaking of the Yeti. I saw saw a video with the, uh, I don't know, maybe the art director of that game or something. Mm. And he had had in his park a, uh, uh, like, a Mount Rushmore coaster with Mount Rushmore. And I was like, oh, they included, like, a little Mount Rushmore like prefab that's kind of a very odd thing to yeah. include especially for a british game developer and then i realized holy shit that was just made out of ground yeah he just oh, he sculpted that, a mount he rushmore sculpted it with yeah. the terrain deformation it is cr- it's cr- wow right? i mean uh, that guy's a video game artist granted yeah but he did it with the in-game tool yeah he did it with it's just a really mouse. powerful man so you just could def- make the stupid sam and max mount rushmore theme park uh <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's it was. Could, does I, a roller coaster come out of a president's nose? That's what needs to, or a mouth. That's <laughs> no, but that. I mean, it, no, it doesn't. But it just snakes all around the yeah. heads. But like, I snakes couldn't believe it. It was so. I mean, it was really impressive. Yeah, I mean, the the, the you know the actual deformation is really impressive, and then also you can just paint uh, the terrain with you know different textures, and it looks really good. Um, it's surprising. They, they've just done everything that you should do when you're making a game like this. And then also just little touches. Like I was playing it and Janelle was looking over my shoulder and Janelle's a video game animator. And she was like, man, the animation of this game is actually really impressive. Like people walking around in the park will just kind of like wrap their arms around each other. Other thing that's cool, they ad- finally added like thoughts and money and all the sort of like basic fundamental like foundational theme park stuff. Um, like people will actually walk around in families now. Like it's not just like random park goers. Mm-hmm. Like it's actually like, groups of people and they're all like stereotypes like older adult couple and like just you know like teens and just right. oh it's all the stuff you want nice again. um yeah it's oh god that game and then just all that they added like a bunch Hopefully of new teens just introduce a chaos element yeah right to your park where they litter all the time and are god i are, hope so just, hopefully I'm older sure adult couples can gain enough affinity for your park that they decide to get married there and then <laughs> teens walk by and have scorn for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um yeah, anyway, it's it's looking really, really good. And now I would actually say, if you're interested in this game, you should probably just buy the early access because it's it's enough of a game that it's it's actually enjoyable to to play and check out. So, yeah, check that game out. Nice. Yep. You guys want to take a break? Yeah. Sure. Video game. This episode of Idle Thumbs is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the fastest, easiest, most user-friendly way to make your very own professional website, portfolio, blog, or online store. You can get started without needing to put in a credit card and without any design or coding skills. Just go to squarespace.com, use the offer code THUMBS at checkout for 10% off, and if you sign up for a year, you will get a domain name thrown in there as well. So we have another reader who made a Squarespace website using the Thumbs promo code. This is Anton Fletcher, 
and he says, hey, Thumbs, I'm what you might call a full stack developer, but Squarespace has saved all the hassle of hosting, patching, and generally spending my hobby time doing the thing I do to earn a living rather than making games, which is what I want to do. Um, so Anton has set up a website called or at salmonmoo.se. That's like salmon moose. Good. Uh, salmonmoo.se to promote his uh, Steam Greenlight game as well as his Ludum Dare. Is it Ludum Dare or Ludum Dare? I never know. Who's to say? I don't know. His Game Jam games. His GIFs. Yep. He has a game called Poker Kingdoms that's up on there, and he has gameplay videos and everything. I'm looking at it on my phone. And, of course, it is well formatted to fit my phone screen. Um, Yes, you can get your own Squarespace website going again. You get that up and running without a credit card until you're ready to uh, commit. Go to squarespace.com and use the offer code THUMBS at checkout for 10% off and get a domain name thrown in there if you sign up for a year. It could be a domain name as good as Salmon Moose. We could only hope. Yeah, it better be. Thanks, Squarespace. Thank you, Chris. Video game. Back? Yeah. Hey! All right, we're back. Um, so despite my love for Overwatch, the game that I've actually played most in the last week is Imbroglio, which is an iOS um, kind of, uh, I guess it's like a one screen roguelike, hmm. you could say. It's uh, it's it's sort of a... It's like a one screen Imbroglio. <laughs> yeah. It's a turn-based sort of, <sighs> turn-based <laughs> like puzzle action combat game, mm. I guess, RPG. Got it. <laughs> Uh, by Michael Bro, who makes um, for years has been making games that are that are similar to this in the sense that they are usually sort of visually conservative but very mechanically deep um, puzzle did, inflected. Did he make eight six eight hack? Yes, he did. Okay, yeah. he also made a game called Helix that no one played really, but is a cool like uh, top down weird i can't even describe got it, it. fuck it <laughs> fuck god these games are so hard these to describe are really hard to describe honestly i i don't know what you guys are talking about i know exactly why if these all of these are just pictured perfectly in my mind <laughs> helix is it plays like a robotron or something but what you have to do is your character has to fully circle strafe an enemy to make it a race instead of shooting oh, okay and it's really fucking hard and fun that's cool that sounds uh, cool yeah so this so imbroglio is a game that is played Um, on, it's also top down and it's played on a grid, Mm. a four by four grid. And you choose one of several characters. I I really just only play the default one really. And you and the enemies basically alternate turns. So you move one grid space. So it's turn based. Yes. And then the enemies move after that and then, and, and vice versa. And every square of the board is a weapon. So if you move into an enemy that is adjacent to you, you will attack that enemy using whatever weapon is on the square you're standing on. And you have essentially two health bars. You have a blue health bar and a red health bar. So do all the enemies. Each weapon only attacks one of those. So you generally are best served by trying to attack an enemy from a square that has a weapon that corresponds to the lower of that enemy's two health bars. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the enemy also has a color and that represents which health bar they draw from when they attack you. So that's also something to take into consideration. Um, As you go around the, the board, when you kill enemies with a given individual weapon, that weapon will itself start to level up. So when you kill an enemy with, say, the sword in the bottom right corner of your board, if you use that sword to kill four enemies, it will have leveled up four times. And then as it well, level up, level up once, really, every for every four kills. And then each time it levels up, it gets some like additional ability or does more damage or something. Uh, and so this game is basically a high score attack. Uh, based on how many like randomly placed stars you pick up. And that's, that's just a good, doesn't matter to explain how that works. It's just essentially the longer you stay alive, the, the, the better you're, you do. I mean, effectively. 
Um, but you have to balance that with trying to be strategic about which weapons you're leveling up and, you know, making sure you're not putting yourself into a position that is going to leave you defenseless next turn because every time you get another star and increment your score by one, all of the walls of the level are randomly regenerated. And so you you could pick that up and find yourself suddenly trapped in a corner with an enemy that you don't have the means to defeat. So it's it's got this puzzle game element because you always have to be thinking a few steps ahead in that regard. Um, but it also plays really quickly and almost sort of feels like an action game because once you've uh, really sort of internalized the the rule set, you can actually just swipe your guy around the board really, really fast. Mm. Um, but often that that will then be your downfall because you're... You can't go be, for it is what you're saying. You can't always go for it because you'll be thinking two moves ahead. And But then... What if you thought three moves ahead? That's dangerous because two moves into that... An enemy could pop out of a corner that you weren't anticipating, and then you were already on autopilot, and now you're screwed. Anyway, it's very difficult to describe, obviously, as you can tell, it's very difficult to describe how this game works and why it's good, but it is amazingly good. There's this entire other component to it where you can actually design the board, so you actually choose what weapon is where. Like You you lay all that out before the game starts. Um, I find that really overwhelming and difficult but it has a really great feature where you can look at the global leaderboard and just copy the board design from anyone on the leaderboard so you can theoretically just go to the person who's first in the world and if you've unlocked all the tiles that they use you can just copy their board design and try and figure out like what strategy they employed to be the top person on the leaderboard Mm. um so that's kind of a cool implicit learning tool. Yeah. It's just a very, very cleverly designed game. It's a very, it's like laser focused and, uh, you know, and w- works shockingly well for a game like this on a tiny little screen. Do you think this game would be comprehensible if you s- streamed it? I know it's an iOS game, but you could uh, like, you could use an AirPlay target or use actually Zoom uh, and you could, uh, like, would people be able to understand what you were doing or do you think I it think would be too crazy? Would, people would probably be able to understand what you're doing in the same, as like a sort of, this is a very rough comparison because something like Dota is a million times more complex than this in total. But like, when I watch a pro Dota match, I can basically understand like oh they're attacking the towers now and like oh they some of them died and so so you're saying but i don't understand all the nuances of what everyone's little choices do and i think it would be similar to watching this right like you could basically see like oh the person is you could basically fill arenas in korea with multi-million dollar (laughs) competitions is what you're saying if you're saying it streams like dota exactly it's exactly true No, but I think the dynamic would be similar where most viewers would probably see like, oh, he's in danger now. He's low on health. Oh, man, he got out of that scrape. That was that was pretty cool. Um, But probably it's not readable enough unless you already know what all the tiles mean. If it's like, why did he move up right there? As as opposed to understanding that like after you complete 20 moves, oh, you're in a bad state or whatever. Like Michael Bro is not an artist by trade and it shows in his games and that doesn't really hurt his games necessarily, but this is not like a very instantly readable game. Like you have to spend when you're starting, you have to spend a lot of time reading tooltips and like clicking on each tile to remind yourself what it does. Cause that stuff is just not communicated, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a clean, efficient way. Um, I actually played a bunch of games, not quite getting what I was doing until I actually just read the, you know, three page, instructions and to be fair three pages on a phone is not a ton of text because it's a small screen of text so that's less daunting than it sounds but i had to just kind of just go through and actually read literally like this is how this game works and then i said oh okay i i get it um it might be it might be an interesting game to stream um nonetheless but yeah there's that there's that 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 weird dynamic to it you um i know chris you've known about the works of michael bro for a while but it seemed it seemed to me like i'm not as familiar with him as a lot of people are though it seems well, what i was gonna say is it seems like you've you've like i remember you played 868 hack i think and you kind of bounced off it what do you think mm-hmm. is sticking uh why do you think this game is stuck uh with you more uh this game is for okay so that's a good question i think 868 hack is a little bit more in the puzzle game directions right so 868 hack is like each screen of that game has it, it is like a classic puzzle game like there's basically a solution to it kind of well some some screens are like that 
even though there's there are shared elements with this game. This game is entirely reactive and tactical in the way that a roguelike or a top-down action game of a certain type is, right? And that and that's a thing that I often gravitate to. Um, this game has very little to do with something like Spelunky or The Binding of Isaac, but it uh, but it's still Isaac. Isaac. But it's I don't know what that where that came from. But it but it still has a certain like shared spark that I take to, which is this combination of like trying to look ahead a few moves, but really reacting on your ability to or resting on your ability to react, you know, move by move and, and just reassess the, the board state. Um, whereas 868 hack for me is challenging in some of the same ways I don't know, like Steven's sausage roll is right where you can sort of permanently just screw yourself just over yourself, yeah. forever. Mm. You know, I mean, you can do that in this game too, but usually not more than a couple moves in advance. Um, and also this game, when you lose, it's like, okay, you lost and you got that score and now you can try again, as opposed to just, you just have halted progress and that's that. Um, so I don't know. I, I also probably think I didn't, I probably could have gotten more into 868 hack. I just, at the time I played it, um, I, I don't, I actually don't remember super well, but I think I just didn't, uh, I didn't just delve into it the same way I did with this. You don't need don't to make why. an excuse. You had a good reason. Yeah. yeah well, okay. So anyway, I, I think this game's great. It's called Imbroglio, um, which I imagine is sort of a pun on his name, although it's spelled like the word Imbroglio and not like his name, Michael Bro which is spelled differently than How that. do you spell the name of this game? I-M-B-R-O-G-L-I-A. It's on the iOS store. I kind of hope it comes to Steam. I don't know if he has any plans for that, but I, I think the readability of this game would be increased by simply giving it more space. Like There's a, there's a ton of f- very fiddly art that is just crunched down to fit mm. on a phone. Yeah, But it's really good. It's a really good is game. Is there an iPad version? I think so, yeah. I think there is. I don't have Think about how good though. this game would be on an iPad Pro on like a huge iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Are iPad Pro apps different than iPad apps? I don't really know how that works. Know. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really care actually. Yeah. Okay, so really cares. <laughs> uh, so that's that. Um finally also the other thing I played was Hitman. Spaff and I on Sunday streamed Hitman escalation missions which nick you had talked about mm-hmm. right when we were talking about hitman i don't know what a month or two ago yeah um but i had not really played um they're really good did yeah. you play more of these yeah 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 they're, yeah they're great we streamed the uh the sort of second half of a sap of of an escalation mission on sapienza which is the italian villa sort of level um, which I know basically inside and out at this point because I've yeah, played right. so much of Sapienza. But then the bulk of the stream was the Paris fashion show level, mm. which the requirements for this escalation mission. So the escalation missions are like arbitrary targets that are pre assigned by the game's designers. Yeah. And they start with one thing like kill this person. But then when you complete that, you unlock another sort of modifier, which is ah, kill this person. But also you must achieve this sub goal. And then you complete that and you get another, which is like, you must be dressed as this character and assassinate this person without anyone noticing or whatever. And did any of them involve the weed room for any reason? No, no, (laughs) that's a different, that's the, uh, that's the Sapienza level. Oh, you asked you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, sadly not. Although these levels have a lot. So I, I I would be shocked if none of them involved. Is the the idea of the escalation missions is partly to try and weave you in and out of all the unused corners of the level, or is that not even the case? I don't think there are unused corners of the level. I think it's just to, to maybe, your own personal unused. That's what I mean. I mean, sorry to get you to, to explore the pockets of the map more. Yeah. And then they're also just fun. I mean, they're just wacky. Like they're like the, in the, towards the end of the Sapienza escalation that we did, they, the, it just arbit, it just adds laser tripwire explosive charges all over the level. And that's just a thing that you have to deal with now. And we blew up a lot and it was funny. Um, and then in the, uh, in the Paris one, the first, there was a there was a particular set of missions the chat was like very insistent we chose so we did it and the first one is uh you must dress up as one of the stylists one of the fashion stylists and murder a helmet kruger 
the fashion star with scissors. Yeah. You have to use <laughs> yeah, did I've you done do that this one. one? Yeah. Did you do the yeah. whole thing? Yeah. Oh man. It's, really it's intense. It's really tough. And then yeah. after that, like the next one is that that was the first one, which already felt like it was three levels into a, a normal escalation mission. Level two is you have to do all that. Then you have to kill the like woman target, the other like the yeah. Whatever one of the main targets from the is, game, the yeah. woman as Helmet Kruger. You have to be dressed up as him and kill her in close combat. Then after that, uh, it adds a thing where all of the um, stylists and also that lady's personal assistant see through your disguise. So you basically can't go anywhere inside as Helmet Kruger in the fashion area because they will all instantly recognize you. Did you, did you, you. do the thing where they f- paint your face? I did, but you can't you can't do that after two right. levels in because right. the stylist they would recognize, recognize it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I did. I did. I sit really down like and get, that you can get, get your makeup. face painted yeah. as that guy and yeah. then walk down the runway yeah. as a hitman. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so really good. good. It's so good. Yeah. Um, and then they added, um, God, what were some of the what were the other? Mod- I mean, it's it gets intense. Yeah. I mean, by, by the time we completed this thing, it was heart pounding. I mean, truly. Oh, right. One of them was like, you can't be seen by security cameras. Well, and it just populates the level with like a billion extra security cameras yeah. at some point. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's bananas, but it was a really fun stream. Um, you can see that on youtube.com slash idle videos. And, uh, I really had a blast doing the escalation missions. That's right. Really the fun. third episode of Hitman, which takes place in Marrakesh drops on Tuesday, May 31st. Oh man. Yes. Oh wow. That's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. excited about that. God, I, I, I know I have been just gushing about games this episode, but like there are a lot of good games this year. There are a lot of good games have come out this yeah. year. The Hitman is, I mean, this is maybe my favorite Hitman game yet, which I don't, I think would would have been hard to predict because Blood Money was such a classic. Yeah, but I th- I think this game is amazing. Yeah, it's. Really I think good. it's really amazing. It's so good. Yep. So, yeah, good games. Good job, developers. Good yeah. job, games. Yep. This is a good game year that we're in, given that it's only May of this year. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. You want to do some reader mail? Yeah. Sure. All right. So uh, let's see here. Keith McNally writes, Hey, Thumbs, I'm at a concert in Vancouver, British Columbia, and the opening band is really bad. I slipped in my earbud-style headphones to help lessen the din. Then I figured, why not listen to a podcast to help pass the time? Idle Thumbs is the only podcast I have that's mixed loudly enough to hear over the music. So I listened to you guys talk about Dark Souls while I stared at this shitty band and had a great time. Thanks, guys. Keith McNally. Nice. We will help you be antisocial. Live music performance or family Mm -hmm. gathering. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we'll be very loud in your ears. Um... So Anthony Go writes, listening to your talk about tribe skiing reminded me of the Minecraft minecart acceleration glitch back before the release of Minecraft. Uh, and before Minecraft added the accelerating rail tiles, oh, man. you could get minecarts to automatically move by running a parallel track with another minecart. When they interacted, they would accelerate each other. It was possible to create loops and stacks that could make amazingly detailed and complicated systems to automate minecarts into the entire, into entire train stations. It's much simpler now since they fixed that glitch and put in acceleration tiles. But before that, making such systems was a mark of respect and ability. Cheers, Anthony Go. Yeah, on the old Idle Thumbs Minecraft server, um, me and Doug Tobacco, who hosts our website, built a huge subway line, and it was all built using that cart touching cart acceleration. I remember... Um, do you guys remember the forum threads around that era? It, um, Stefan... Uh, Zvetanovic? Yeah, yeah, I can never pronounce his last name correctly. Who drew the Idle Thumbs logo, um, filled that forum thread for a while with diagrams, like amazingly drawn diagrams, because he's a great artist, of like ways to build self like loading cart systems and all these crazy like it was just using that weird cart physics hack to build all these totally crazy machines i don't know if he actually built any of them or if he was just like the leonardo da vinci of minecraft (laughs) just like drawing these elaborate pencil sketches of how a cart would pop up and then accelerate away and go through a loop and you know but oh man that was that was the era that I was playing a lot of Minecraft. Me that too. Really That's actually stuff. the last era that I really played very yeah. much Minecraft. I played I played a little bit when the acceleration stuff went in, but I remember at one point we did a re-roll of the Idle Thumb server and just the seed wasn't good and I stopped playing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, I, I remember that stuff really well. I remember it I, I remember simultaneously that that was a weird era of Minecraft because I think for, for people like me, 
I would go into a server like the idle thumb server and see all that stuff. And at the one, on the one hand be like, I, this is crazy. Like I could never, how the hell do people figure this shit out with the crazy gl- physics glitch acceleration and like crazy computer shit people were making with simple switches or what, maybe even predating that. I can't even recall anymore. That stuff um, was in the yeah, okay. simple redstone stuff. And, uh, and so I was intimidated by it, but it was also the height of my like awe and respect for what people were making. And so it was this amazing, like perfect sort of point on the graph of me being able to get huge enjoyment out of just walking through an Epic server and marveling at everything that everyone made. Um, But sort of in part because I could tell that it was just beyond. It was like just out of reach. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I was going to just dedicate, you know, a a huge amount of time, but I, I was so impressed by the stuff that people did. That was an amazing time in minecraft i mean yeah. i'm sure it's still an amazing time in minecraft but i haven't yeah you know. back when it all felt new it did it felt totally new it felt like revolutionary yeah i mean which is obviously one of the reasons that game is successful it's one of the reasons notch is the man he is today <laughs> 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 all right calix renault writes i actually cold pitched american mcgee on willy wonka's chocolate factory shortly after alice came out <laughs> <laughs> Things were in early exploration of, of American McGee's Oz, so the trend was already clear, and I had come into proximity with him through an internship. He just looked at me for a beat and he did not see and said he did not see anything to it. I was <laughs> I was too dumbfounded to respond. I thought the chocolate factory at night was clear horror gold, and the monsters Wonka saved the Oompa Loompas from would have been a wild opportunity if the insane manufacturing equipment wasn't terrible, uh, terrible enough. But I was a precious babby at the time, so I immediately backed down and thanked him. But I believe there's another timeline where that conversation went differently, and none of us ever slept soundly again. Now that you've described it, it sounds much less like it needs the Alice treatment and more like a wild version of Crusader Kings. Too many movie tie-ins go for the simple character action or tactical RPG approach. Surely there's room for a Schindler's List RTS or Dist- <laughs> District 9 as a city builder or Minority Report by way of Papers, Please. What would be your most ridiculous movie game? Cheers, Calix. Man, good thing we talked about a concept that someone directly pitched to a Yeah, that's really like, good. What, 15 years I'm, ago? I'm glad that yeah, good in history. I, like, I don't see anything to it, says American <laughs> McGee. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go make American McGee's Oz, though. And American McGee's Grim. Mm. Yeah, well, whatever. We in this reader know that uh, American McGee's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is, is where the true, the true greatness lies. Yeah. Yeah. If only we could live in that reality. I think our probably our best weird movie spinoff game is an adaptation of Jurassic Park that's just pipe dreams. <laughs> <laughs> very probably. pretty, sorry, very pretty pipe dreams. Very, yeah, very pretty pipe dream. Man, there's uh, there are three build the Nublars. There's also a Mister DNA, which I think was one of our episode names. I think that was it, an, <laughs> or no, Doctor DNA. Dr. Excuse DNA. me, Doctor yeah, DNA. Dr. He got DNA. promoted. Yeah. Um, and Doctor DNA looks like it's a licensed game based off of the inf- instructional Mister DNA film with the cartoon characters who dig down mm-hmm. into the earth. It's crazy. There's also like three plus desktop Sims in Wizard Jam this year. It's a good, good yeah, jam. Anyway, yeah, if you want to know what what people's ideal. Uh, game license game would be just search the wizard jam itchio page for build the nublar and you'll see uh all the different <laughs> yep. ways that jurassic park can be made um all right so stephen thomas writes in hey thumbs your talks about doom last week had me wondering if you heard about the recent doom 2 fan-made wad file called ancient aliens <laughs> as you can tell i couldn't tell if i wanted to pronounce that wad or wad so i split the difference and it came out weird weird weird, weird. It's a 32-level map pack with a couple extra enemies and some sprite updates to boot. It also features its own music. Although the soundtrack is a polar opposite to what you guys were saying about the new Doom soundtrack, rather than it being a kind of fitting metal, Ancient Aliens has tracks that feel like elevator music, and it makes me laugh as I slog through the hordes of demons with a cheery little tune in the background. That's really good, actually. Anyway, if you're looking for more classic Doom-style levels, it's a fantastic wad, and I recommend checking it out. P.S. I was waiting for lunch when listening to your podcast, and when the Doom talk started, a commercial for Doom started to play. It felt like the stars aligned, or maybe a Hellgate opened and I'm in for a bad week. In any case, keep up the show. It's always a highlight of my week. Cheers, Stephen Figbird Thomas. Yeah. That's pretty good. I'm glad people are still making Doom too. Yep. Yeah, that's really good. That commercial coming on means that our new uh, advertising system has worked as intended. I don't know if right. people read that New York Times article <laughs> about podcast networks wanting sort of better tracking mm-hmm. uh, and able ability to monetize listeners. We're trying some stuff. Mm-hmm. 
It's like the uh, it's like the um, signal lights that trigger when a bus, you know, like turns green to let the bus through automatically. It's 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 like that. It's just I think it's like it's like, like a Minority Report. You walk into a mall and all the advertisements yeah. tell you about your favorite food. Mm-hmm. But in this case, if you're listening to us talk about Doom, uh, an advertisement for Doom is going to come on. Hopefully, this means that an advertisement for American McGee's uh, <laughs> Chocolate Factory <laughs> yeah. shows up because these are just being generated by some weird. Uh, mm. AI hive. Yeah. An ad hive. <laughs> Man, Ancient Aliens is a crazy looking wad. Yeah. I'm looking at screenshots. Have you seen this, Nick? Is it a is it no. a rad oh. wad, Chris? It's a very rad wad. A very wad wad. It's a rod wad. <laughs> I would I think it's a, a wad wad is what you should be calling this. A rod rod. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's terrible. Anyway, Ancient Aliens. Good name. <laughs> it's too. really good. I know. Um, yeah, it is quite good. Um, okay. Uh, maybe one more, one more email. One more email. Ben Liu writes in about Jay Allard's brain. He says, Hey thumbs, just wanted to chime in and mention th- this is in reference to one of the, uh, the excerpts we read from Jay Allard's cumularity mm. last week, I guess he says, I just wanted to chime in and mention that Jay is actually technically correct in saying that the average age of the cells in a human body is about seven to 10 years old. This fact is held up by philosophers as a defense of Heraclitus's claim that a man never steps in the same river twice because he is not the same man, nor is it the same river. However, uh, this fails to take into account that brain cells do not get replenished for the most part, and the same cells stay with you from birth to death, which kind of blows a hole in the entire argument. Cheers, Ben Liu. So there, Sorry, enjoy Jay. a little fact. <laughs> enjoy a fact for you. I wish Jay was on this episode to respond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a podcast, I guess. Thanks for listening to it. And if you would like to send us an email of your own, you can do so by sending an email to questions at idlethumbs.net. We're also on Twitter at idlethumbs. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash idlethumbs. And we've got all kinds of other shows on our website at idlethumbs.net slash shows. Um, and that's about it. Oh, if you like this this show, please tell a friend and consider giving us a rating or review on iTunes. That helps out a lot and helps us show up in the uh, category rankings there and is a really good way to help spread the word. Also, just telling people about the show is super duper useful and appreciated. Yep. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Nick, are you going to stream more Dark Souls this weekend? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you better. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed? All right. Sunday at noon or one or something? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, twitch.tv slash idle thumbs. We should, we should use the uh, notification system that Twitch has to like announce upcoming streams. So we'll, mm. we'll do that. So you can check there. Uh, we'll announce it on Twitter and then also in the idle thumbs streams thread on the idle forums in the idle thumbs episode uh, sub forum. So, yeah, watch Nick get better and better at Dark Souls. I thought you were gonna say get owned. <laughs> watch Nick get owned. There it is. Well, those will both happen. Yeah. One Souls. will lead to the other. It's yep. true. That's called learning, Nick. Oh. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, get owned again and again. Jay Allard said that. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> Jay Allard. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Cold Bloom Manufacturing has <laughs> recommenced. The dormant uh, factory yep. comes alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just people in this town are finally working again. This has been a Cold Bloom right. town. People here, generations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All my life, I made Cold Blooms. My dad made Cold right. Blooms. My grandpa made Cold Blooms, and finally, I can make Cold Blooms again. <laughs> Thanks, Harry's. <laughs> we bought an old Cold Bloom factory. <laughs> <laughs>